Hey guys, what's going on? Kyle Krieger here, and today I have a special guest with me. What's up everybody? I'm Michael Bloom, and I'm so excited to be here on Uncut. <laughs> That's right. So Michael's here, he's on tour, going around the country, and he stopped into LA for a haircut. This hair is looking pretty great already. What do you want to do Thank with you. today? Yeah, you know, I just think that it can use a little more, a little, there's room for improvement. I do like the, the length and the close, I really like the contrast, but I just kind of would love to see, you know, learn from you a little bit more about how to shape it, how to okay. get her really quaffed, and happening in that right. <laughs> Type of way. Okay. Sometimes there's some pieces that kind of hang out, do their own thing, and I just feel like we can tighten it up. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. it looks great. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so you're on tour right I'm now. On tour. You're a yeah. singer songwriter. Do you write? I'm like, I love lyrics. You know how people will say, like, are you a lyrical person or a melody person? Do people mm. ask you that? Is that a thing? Kind of. Yeah. People ask me that. Like, They've asked me that. You before. sing? No, but I just <laughs> you yeah, give right. us a few notes right now. <laughs> to answer your question, yeah, I, I write lyrics and, and, and melodies and music and chords and you know, I kind of do as much or as little as needed. As a person who appreciates music, I tend to love lyrics more yeah. and I really appreciate your lyrics. I think that they're great. Does the lyric come to you first or the yeah. melody come to you first? Sometimes it's lyric first, sometimes it's music first, sometimes I have a little lyrical idea for years and then it will become a song. I'm always looking forward to like finding new ways for a song to be created. How would you describe the music that you sing? I describe my music as progressive R&B. Okay, I love that. But different people I've heard use different terms for it. And growing up I listened to a lot of mostly soul and gospel music. Yeah. What's the one album that really kind of defined your childhood? We were talking about it earlier, but like when I was 12 and 13, I pretty much listened to Stevie Wonder discography like oh, up, yeah. down, and around. Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Donny Hathaway, Patti LaBelle, like classic soul. Were you ever intimidated coming into that R&B space? looking the way that you look, mm. elaborate on what it feels to be someone who's white, who makes R&B music, who yeah. also happens to be gay. Yeah, I'm definitely not intimidated. I just think that white artists have an obligation to honor the histories and individuals and communities that literally created the shit and created the language we're using, you know? Yeah. Any artist making music in any American genre is making black music. Because mm. all American music, black people made everything. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that categorically white people can't make that music or study from that music or learn that music. But it does mean that the white people who are borrowing those tropes and languages have an extra obligation to know the history, ask the questions. There's just an extra level of work that I, as a white soul artist, have to do. Mm -hmm. My band is very diverse. There are black folks, white folks, brown folks in my band. I just think it's important to always be recognizing where it comes from and honoring those lives. So it is Pride Month. Yes, it is. <laughs> ta 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 ta. <laughs> this is like one of my most favorite times of year because mm -hmm. everybody seems happy and joyous and mm -hmm. free, and it makes me like pumped. So, mm -hmm. as a musician, like, do you have anything to say about what it feels like to be an out gay artist or mm -hmm. about the songs that you write about? I have personally come a long way. I'm 28 years old. Oh yeah, okay. And I'm I, 34. So I think people <laughs> around our age, specifically. So much has happened in the last 15 years. Yeah. I was in high school pre-Obama, and I think yeah. the Obama administration really, ch it's a big deal when the President of the United States says, hey, it's cool to be gay. Like, that's yeah. a massive deal. I was super nervous that I wouldn't be accepted. I was an overachiever. I felt like it was gonna override all my other achievements. So for me personally to get to a point in my life where I'm making music as an openly gay artist, it's massive. So your most recent single mm -hmm. is called Are You Mad? Right. And the lyric is, are you mad that I'm gay? Right. right. How did that come to you and why? You know what's funny, I'll tell you about that song. Are You Mad is not about being gay, it's about being yourself, mm -hmm. you know? I believe, Kyle, that each one of us exists at our own unique intersection of experiences and identities. And all we can do is celebrate exactly who we are. So when you so when I say, are you mad that I'm gay? It's, are you mad that I'm me? Mm -hmm. Are you mad that I'm living my truth the way I want to live my fucking truth? Right. And if so, why don't you go spend more time living your truth? Be mm -hmm. who you are. No one else is like you. Blunder is another song that I love so much Ooh. that you put out. And you mentioned in the lyrics and you talked about shame. Mm -hmm. And also for me, I don't know what Blunder meant to you, mm -hmm. but for me it kind of felt about the journey of coming out yeah. and also dealing with that shame. Blunder is, is largely about an internalized idea I had because of my shame that I wasn't worthy of, of love. That was my blunder. And you know you're good When you know your love is pure When you're doing everything you should but you just can't open the door I've been searching for a while now Thinking that it's time now I'ma throw away this pain But ever since I was a child I had it on my mind I'm dealing with my shame 
I've been thinking about the way that I allowed other people's ideas of me to become my own thoughts. And so yeah, Blender is just saying like, man, I'm done listening to external ideas about what I'm allowed to have and kind of like reclaiming love for myself. I'm all these things. I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm joyous, I'm, I'm positive. My EP is called Cynicism and Sincerity, right? I'm not really always anything. Yeah, I get that too. I feel like I overcompensate a lot when it comes to being gay and being validated mm. and needing to fit disapproval on the outside. I even know that I'm doing it. The type of validation that comes in when people validate your exterior mm. is like very fleeting, right? Mm. It like will come in and it'll feel good for a minute, but you almost like need it constantly. Part of working out is to feel good and feel healthy and to do it for me, but also sure. I can't deny that part of it is because that I'm validated on my exterior. Well, this to me relates to a question that I ask a lot, which is how do we separate our desires for who we wanna fuck, for how we wanna look, whatever. How do we separate our desires from the problematic forces that shape our desires, right? So if I'm attracted to X, Y, Z person, but I can't ignore the fact that, you know, beauty is a construct and like, yeah. the things that I've been taught are beautiful, maybe only this type of person or guys that look like this or have this much money or have this educational status. And it's hard because at the same time, I wanna, I wanna decolonize my mind, but like, my mind has been colonized. Yeah. So like, how do I maintain the awareness while also not stopping myself from going to the gym because it feels good or I wanna look yeah. a certain way or I'm attracted to this guy and I, I wanna go hook up with him, so I should, you know? I feel like it's one of those things that, you know, we're not gonna necessarily figure out today, but it's. Yeah, it I just feel like I can't figure out the top of my hair. Um, it's gone through a lot of transformations. I mean, we're all just looking for your, the top. What, what is, yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm just gonna wet her down. Yeah, wet her down. Wet it down, wet it down. Mm. When no one is around you, say, baby, I love you. You ain't running games. Wet it down, wet it down. <laughs> you acting kind of crazy. Can't call in me, baby. Got <laughs> a sudden change. What's your relationship with Grinder? I don't have any ass. Never? You've never, bitch. When I was 23, right. I downloaded Grinder for like maybe a few minutes. I used to have Adam for Adam and Manhunt uh -huh. when I was using, but I just don't really use they them anymore. Okay. No, I don't use them at all now. I don't have any apps now, but it was almost like mental masturbation a little bit. I would waste a lot of time on there. And like, yeah. I'm just not trying to waste any time. I, I got shit you. to do. But I just also get frustrated because I don't know, I feel like my opportunity to meet people, I have a busy life, I'm on yeah. the road, da, 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 like, it's so limited in yeah. terms of like meeting. I meet people on the gram. See, you signed the DM, <laughs> so Kyle Krieger. Okay, you know, and you're, you're the second person in like a few days to be like, you gotta slide more. I work with this brand I love so much. It's okay. called House 99. Lovely. Can you see it? Can you see it? I'm gonna use their gel because the gel is going to, any gel would do this. Yeah. Um, or not any gel, but any like good gel would add a little bit of density to your hair. So it's gonna have a little height, right? Okay. Which is kind of what we want. Now I have some height, then I'm gonna add, this is a clay. Right. I'm gonna try to make it disappear in my hands. Yep. So it's evenly distributed. And then just kinda put it throughout. It's definitely not falling on the side anymore. Okay. Would you say it is or is not a vibe? It's a vibe. Okay. Before we finish our video, yep. your style, but I wanna do like a little rapid fire question round. Just like silly first date questions. First dates. Well, they're not first date, but if you went on a first date with me, it's what I would ask. Okay. Because they're a little too I won't silly. tell you what I asked on first dates. Okay. <laughs> if you could trade lives with one person in the world, who would it be? Beyonce. Insecurity about your biggest flaw. Insecurity about my biggest flaw. Ooh, so many. Um, that I oh, that please. I'm aiming too hard, that I need everyone's approval, and I don't okay. want to disappoint anybody. <laughs> okay. Your most bizarre talent. <laughs> oh god. Right, I'm not gonna say that. I'm pretty good at massage. Oh, how you It's not that bizarre. How you doing? <laughs> cut or uncut? Jewish, cut. Okay. Although no preference, and I'm definitely on the pro, no cutting okay. train. <laughs> Why are we eating late baby's gen genitals? <laughs> no. The Hogwarts house you would belong to? Rumpelstiltskin? What? Um, no. You don't know Harry Potter? No, 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 a zombie yeah. kill squad, and there was, we were in an apocalypse, and okay. you could pick three famous people that you think are badass enough to be in your zombie kill squad. I pick Barack Obama. Yeah. Cardi B. You know, <laughs> yeah. And I pick. Um, I Cardi B can do some damage. Yeah, Barack. I don't know, Kyle Krieger. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for watching today, and this looks great. You look amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs>
You, yeah, you no. crushed it. You can find Michael on any streaming network, right? Yep. Spotify, Spotify Apple, Apple Music. Music, everywhere. Michael Bloom, B L U M E. And you can find me on social media at Kyle Krieger, and you can find him. M Bloom Music. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Peace. Bye.